All right. In this video, we're going to learn about enthalpy and heat changes, delta H, and heats of reaction, and coupling calorimetry with heats of reaction. So first, let's open this up. Um, when a reaction gives off heat, we use the term exothermic, like exiting. Heat is exiting the reactants, and the reaction is exothermic. So heat is exiting. Heat is actually a product. That'll come later. When a reaction takes in heat, there's a lot of vocabulary here. Taking in is also absorbing. We say heat is entering the reactants. The reaction is endothermic. So exothermic and endothermic actually have meaning in terms of the reaction exiting and entering. Exothermic, heat is released or given off. Heat is a product. Endothermic, heat is absorbed. Heat is entering. Heat is a reactant. In an exothermic reaction, the products have less energy than reactants. This is a new thing for you. This is the Greek letter S. It means the sum of. So the sum of, this is the heat of formation of the products minus the sum of the heat of formation of the reactants is negative. Exothermic, we have a negative delta H. This is actually the equation for finding delta H, which is a whole separate video. Don't worry, you will learn more. Don't worry about this equation right now. And in an endothermic reaction, the products have more energy than the reactants. The sum of the heat of the products minus the sum of the heat of formation of the reactants is greater than zero. And there should be a little knot here. Oops, what just happened? There we go. Um, don't worry about these little knots, but you can add them if they're not in your notes. We'll learn about those later. That stands for standard conditions. These are called energy diagrams. So in an exothermic reaction, these would be the re um, this would be the heat energy of the reactants. This is the heat energy of the products. And so the products minus the reactants is a negative number. Heat is given off. And this is these hold because of the law of conservation of energy. Energy in chemical reactions, it can't just be created randomly. It can't be lost randomly. It's transferred from one place to another. It goes somewhere. OK, now just a general summary. So if the sign of the heat of reaction is positive, then the reaction is endothermic and heat is a reactant. If the sign of delta H of reaction is negative, the reaction is called exothermic and heat is a product. Now I've said this all several times in here and the important piece is knowing this. This is the, the full summary of it all. Also, when we say heat is a product when delta H is negative, when we write heat in the reaction, we would write it as a positive quantity when it's in the reaction. When we're writing delta H reaction like this, we can write delta H in reaction is a negative number. If we place that into the reaction, we would have to write it as a positive number. Okay, so let's do alchemetry with this enthalpy. By the way, H is enthalpy, in case you forgot. Um, we can do stoichiometry. Also, these are funny looking units. Kilojoules per mole reaction. We're gonna say a lot of this per mole reaction throughout the rest of the school year. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. So here's our problem. And remember, we always circle what we're given. We're actually also given this quantity, so we're gonna circle that. And we'll put a square around what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the heat produced. So we always start with what we're given. In this case, we're going to start with our grams of NH3 because we can always go grams to moles using 
molar mass. Then we can go from moles of NH3 to moles of reaction using our coefficient. So what does that mean? Let's open this up. All right. So we start with our 34 grams of NH3. Use the molar mass to get to moles of NH3. Now, here's this mole reaction thing. Weird looking new thing that we have. So the coefficients that we have can convert any chemical into one mole of reaction. So six moles of H2O would equal one mole of reaction. Four moles of NH3 is equal, equivalent to one mole of reaction. So there's our going from moles of a chemical to moles of reaction. And now we can use this piece right here. I'm going to erase all of this. We can use our delta H to go from moles of reaction to kilojoules. Now we're only allowed, we calculate that all out and we cancel our units. Let's check them. Grams cancel, moles cancel, moles reaction cancel, and we're left with kilojoules. And we get a number, but we're only allowed to keep two sig figs. So here's our final answer. It's hard to write 700 with only two sig figs, so we have to write this in scientific notation. Okay, and I've highlighted and put in certain parts. If I highlight something, it's important. You should highlight it yourself. All right, more practice with these concepts. You're given a reaction. You're given the heat of reaction for the reaction. You want to know, is this endo or exothermic? Well, heat of reaction is negative, and we learned from this that a negative heat of reaction means the reaction is exothermic and heat will be a product. So is heat a reactant or a product? It's going to be a product. Exothermic, heat is produced, heat is a product. We write the reaction with the heat in the reaction equation, which means put this value, just the heat, not the kilojoules per mole reaction, just the kilojoules, into the reaction in the appropriate place. Well, the appropriate place is going to be the product right here. So notice now we have the heat in the reaction itself. Okay. And there's a little note for you that we write the heat as a positive quantity in the reaction. All right, new problem. Here is our question. I'll put a square around it. Here's what I'm given. So now I have to start with what I'm given. There's my given quantity. Check it off. Now I can use, I, I don't have this written in the question itself, but here it is in the reaction. I know, actually I was given this right up here. Oops. Right here. I know that it's 1396 kilojoules per one mole of reaction. That's how I get from kilojoules to moles of reaction. I'm going to talk about this sign here in a little bit, because notice that's positive, whereas this was negative. We'll talk about that in a moment. It's all about how the question is asked. So I'll get back to that. Now, there's four NH3s and one mole of reaction. When this reaction happens one time through, we have four moles of NH3 that would be used. So, oops, the question's not asking about NH3 though. <laughs> the question is asking about NO2. So let's go over here. I, my eyes got stuck on the floor. Um, we're looking for NO2. So first we have to get our moles of NO2. So there's four moles of NO2 and one mole of the reaction. This reaction happens once through. We get four moles of NO2. And now we need the molar mass to go to grams of NO2. One mole of NO2 is 46 grams. Remember to look up those masses on the periodic table. It's 1N plus two O's. That's 14 plus two times 16. 
and that comes out to, well, it's actually 14.01. 14.01 plus 2 times 16 gives us the 46.01 grams per mole of NO2. We calculate that out, and I simplified the things here. The kilojoules cancel, the mole reaction cancels, the moles of NO2 cancel. And notice these two numbers can simplify. This is a 1, this is a 2. So now we get 2 times the 4 times the 46.01. We get this. And let's see, we have to round that now. So what was our give? Oh, we had four sig figs here. And we had four sig figs here. We get to keep four sig figs. That's how many we kept. We're in good shape. OK. Coupling calorimetry with heat of reaction. For a reaction happening in a water solution in a calorimeter, since energy is conserved, the heat flow from the calorimeter will have to be equal and opposite to Q reaction. Q reaction, what is that? Q reaction is the heat that the reaction is giving off or creating. And in example one, we wrote this. It's the heat change for a specific amount of a chemical reacting. So if a reaction's happening in water or in the calorimeter, then the heat given off by the reaction or taken in by the reaction is coming from the calorimeter or being given to the calorimeter. So this equation, comes directly from the conservation of energy. The calorimeter, and we'll, you'll see calorimeters in class. We'll do some labs with calorimeters. The calorimeter has um, a heat change of ms delta t. The calorimeter is always a water solution for our class and what we'll be, is what we'll be doing. This is very important here. m is the mass of the water plus any reactants that are in the water. This will come up in problems we do in classwork and in homework. Okay, we've talked about Q reaction. There are two problem types. I'm not gonna read that out because you should have that in your notes already in the printout. And then I've written this again because it's so important. Um, M is the mass of the water plus any reactants place in the water. And I left that there for you to copy it because I want to make sure that you have, have that in your notes. We're going to assume the heat capacity is 4.184 joules per gram Kelvin. You've been seeing this as, oops, you've been seeing this as joules per gram degree Celsius. And those are actually the same. I know that Celsius and Kelvin are apart by 273 degrees, but it turns out in these problems, the Kelvin and the Celsius are interchangeable because of the delta T, and you'll see that a little later. It's confusing for many students, but you'll see in an example how that works. Okay, so we're gonna make this assumption. So for all problems in the class, anytime we, anytime we have a calorimeter, we're gonna assume this is the heat capacity, the specific heat capacity for the solution in the calorimeter. We calculate Q reaction using this method right here. Oops, that's number two. <laughs> but it's the same type of problem. We used the same method in number 2D and number one. So this is how we're going to be calculating Q reaction. We use the mass of the reactant and the delta H of reaction. And it's really important. You have to use the limiting reactant if you're given more than one reactant. And that will come up in the problem that we do as an example. OK, so let's get to an example. So here's our problem. I'm going to circle all the given quantities 
because that's what we do. Give it a whole bunch of information. And this should have been covered up. <laughs> you, you'll have it in your notes. You have a blank that you'll need to fill in. I've got the density of the solution, and I want to find delta H reaction. Okay. So I know I'm doing this type of a problem because I have a reaction and I've got information about temperature and masses and heat capacities. The way I know what type of problem I'm doing is based on the information I'm given. If I have a reaction and I have temperatures, I am using this equation right here. So I split this into the calorimeter and the reaction data. For the calorimeter, let's see. Oh, this stuff, it actually is going to appear on both sides, but this is part of the reaction because magnesium's in the reaction. I need to find the limiting reactant because I'm given two reactants here. So first, I'm going to find my moles of magnesium. So I convert my grams of magnesium, I get my moles of magnesium. For the HCl, we learned this a while ago. When we're given a volume, we've used that. When, we've given, when we're given a volume and a molarity, I get moles by multiplying my volume and my molarity together. Recall, molarity is moles over liters. So moles is equal to molarity times the liters. So now I have my moles of both chemicals. I actually can find out right away. If you look, I know we, we did these ICF boxes. There's a much quicker way to find limiting reactants. I have a one to two ratio. And I hope you can see that if I multiply this by two, I would get a number bigger than this number right here. And I need two HCLs for every one mg. So I'm going to multiply this by two to see how many moles of HCL I need. I would need more. I would need greater than 0.01 moles of HCL. So I don't have enough HCL. I'm going to run out of HCl. HCl is limiting. So when I do my Q reaction calculation, I have to use the limiting reactant, which is my HCl. And I have the moles of HCl right here. So this is what I'm going to use when I do my Q reaction. Now for my Q calorimeter, let's see what I have. I need my math. Ah. This gets a little confusing here. I know I circled and squared, but this one gram per mil and 200 mils means I have 200 grams of solution. And I'm adding this keyword, adding. I have to add these two numbers together because I added this mass to the volume. So my mass for the calorimeter is adding these two things together. I'm going to keep an extra sig fig for now. Um, the heat capacity was given to, oh, it wasn't, but we made it, I wrote above, assume that this is the heat capacity. Uh, let's see the temperatures. It's at this temperature, so that's Ti. Our final temperature is right here because we increase it to that amount. Here's my Tf. So I have enough information to calculate Q calorimeter. Over here, let's see, what was I looking for? Calculate the heat of reaction. So on the Q reaction side, I have so much written out here. It's starting to look far too complicated. OK. So I have been asking delta H reaction is question mark. That's what I'm looking for. We never start on the side that we're looking for something. Always start with the side where there's no question marks. So I don't have any question marks over here, which means I can calculate MS delta T. 
I'm just plugging in my values to calculate my MS delta T. I have to make sure our units cancel, the grams cancel, the joules do not cancel. Now, you'll see down here it's explained why I can cancel my Kelvin with my Celsius. There's some sentences in here. I'm not gonna not gonna repeat that. You can pause and write that all down. There's also some information about sig figs, so you'll need to possibly pause and write that all down if you're wondering what happens with the sig figs here. Now, right here, I have my QCal. I also know QCal is negative Q reaction. So I have my QCal. QCal is negative Q reaction, so Q reaction is the negative of this number right here. So Q reaction is negative this number. All right, we have to use our limiting reactant. That's the moles of HCl. So I know that I have this many joules, or kilojoules actually, for this many moles of HCl. I know my ratio of kilojoules per mole HCl, and I just set that up. When you're doing these problems, you always need the ratio. You're trying to get kilojoules per mole. So I have this negative 2.4953 kilojoules per 0.01 moles of HCl, but I need kilojoules per mole reaction. I go to my reaction coefficients to get what that would be. It's two moles of HCl to one mole of reaction. All right, so two moles of HCl for one reaction. I use that ratio as a conversion right here. I have my two moles of HCl to one mole reaction. I calculate that out. And looking back up here, I was only allowed to keep three sig figs <laughs> right there. So here's my final answer. Now I've asked you to draw a beaker showing the contents before and after the reaction. And I said, randomly start with 4-HCl in the beaker. So... Here we go. HCl is a strong acid, it's going to split apart, and I had some solid Mg. You don't have to mark how many moles or anything, because we just got some Mg solid ribbon. And don't forget, here's our reaction. Now, for every two HCls, I make, two, I make one MgCl2. So in the products, I should have one MgCl2, and remember, HCl is limiting. I'm going to have a little bit of this left as a solid. Not all of it, some of it. So over here, let's get rid of that little dot that I actually made in there. It's not going to, oh, there we go. Okay, so after the reaction occurs, my four HCls, oops, my four HCLs that I have are going to make two MgCl2s. Those are soluble, so they're going to be floating around. And I have a little bit of leftover Mg. I'm noting here, but you wouldn't have to show it. Two hydrogen gas molecules have escaped. And the reason I wrote that is because... Two HCLs make one H2, so four HCLs would make two H2s. Make my two H2. Those are gaseous molecules, so they're not shown in the solution there. All right, last problem. Um, this is sort of a reverse of the previous problem. Let's circle what we're given. Got our initial temperature. We're trying to find the final temperature. Oh, we also know our heat of reaction. So we've got our equation. We know this is, this is the equation because 
we have a reaction, and we have temperatures. Whenever we have temperatures and reaction, this is the kind of problem we're doing. So let's open this up. I was given information about two reactants, so I'm going to have to do a limiting reactant calculation here. But let's start with our QCAL. Oh, was added to again. So I didn't mention in here that the density was one gram per mil. We're going to assume for all of these kinds of problems, anytime we have a solution in a calorimeter, we're going to assume one gram per mil is the density, which means one gram is equal to one milliliter. So this right here is 200 grams, 200.0 grams. So the mass is going to be our 200 grams plus the mass of the magnesium because the magnesium was added to the solution. We're going to keep an extra sig fig for now. At the end, we'll have to round. Okay, we have our heat capacity. Use these now. Oh, and the heat capacity, we're assuming this for all of these calorimeter problems with a solution. There's our heat capacity. We were given the initial temperature. We've been told it was the initial temperature. There we go. We are asked for the final temperature. And we were given two reactants, the magnesium and the hydrochloric acid. We have to convert each to moles so that we can find the limiting reactant. Um, and just like the previous problem, I have to use molarity and volume to get liters. Sorry, to get moles. <laughs> so here's my calculations for my moles. And again, I need two HCl for each mg. So I could, this is another way to do it. I can convert my mg into HCl to see how many moles of HCl I would need. And this calculation shows I would need greater than 0.1 moles of HCl, which is all that I have. So HCl is limiting. I need to use HCl for the Q reaction. And my question mark is over here. So I do not start on this side. We're not starting on this side. We are starting with the Q reaction. I wrote a note up here. Q reaction is calculated using the method in example one when given mass of a reactant and delta H reaction. For now, you're going to have to keep looking back at your notes and kind of memorize this. It's really important. So what did we do in example one? That's example two. Here's example one. Okay. We started with our grams, we converted to moles of the chemical, and then we converted to moles of reaction, and then we converted to kilojoules. So that's what we're going to have to do. Start with our grams of the limiting reactant and convert all the way to kilojoules. So let's see how that works. Oops. Okay, this is not cooperating with me. There we go. All right, so Q reaction. I start with my moles of my limiting reactant. And I convert using the coefficient. I can go from moles of the chemical to one mole reaction. With the coefficient, here's, oops, let's get to my coefficient. There's my coefficient for the HCl. So two HCLs is one mole reaction. And then right here, right here, that's my conversion right here. I can convert from moles of reaction to kilojoules using my heat of reaction. Um, big mistake students make is they forget to convert their kilojoules to joules. To go from kilojoules to joules, you multiply by 1,000. So here's the conversion here. I have to get this to joules. And again, this is a mistake students make all the time. You want to be careful there. You have to do that because 
the units right here are joules. So you have to make sure that you don't stay in the kilojoules, you gotta convert your Q reaction to joules. Okay, there's also a little note on sig figs. Okay, so QCal is MS delta T, which is equal to negative Q reaction. So now I know MS delta T is negative Q reaction. This was a negative here, so this is going to be positive now. You have to always remember to change your sign. I calculated my Q reaction, so MS delta T is the negative of Q reaction, which is going to be positive 2.495 times 10 to the 4 joules. We're still keeping an extra sig fig for now. All right. So I have my negative of Q reaction, which is positive 2.495 times 10 to the fourth joules, is MS delta T. This M, the S, T final minus T initial, all those data are from right up here under the Q cal is MS delta T. So now I divide both. Oh, wait, let's look at our units. Let's check our units out here. The grams cancel. The Kelvin gets to cancel. Oh, no, we're not. We're not going to cancel that right now. You'll see why in a moment. But here's where you see if you didn't write your units down and you didn't remember to multiply this by a thousand, your joules wouldn't cancel correctly. But right now, these joules are the same, so I can cancel those out. And I'm going to divide both sides by the 201.28 times 4.184. That, when I calculate this piece, comes out to this number. And that is equal to this side right here, because I divided both sides by this amount, which leaves me only this on the right-hand side. And then I have to go back and pay attention to my sig figs. In this number, I really only got to keep three sig figs, but we're going to leave more for now. Now I add the 25 Celsius to both sides, and I get this for my final answer for the TF. I have to round to the tenths place <laughs> because I was only allowed to keep three sig figs in this number. So this was my last sig fig. And this, with addition, subtraction, I have to pay attention to the placeholder. And so this was only, I only had information to the tenth place. So I'm going to have to round my final answer to the tenth place. Let's see what's under here. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> That's it.